There's more to Asgard's arsenal than just Mjolnir. A whole range of iconic weapons have graced the hands of Thor's fellow Asgardians, and they've all done some serious damage when wielded in the field of battle. Now, typically, these weapons can only be wielded by the gods they were forged for, but on certain occasions, there have been mortals who have gotten their hands on them. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Comics, and here are 10 mortals who wielded Asgard's weapons. Number 10. Jackie Lucas The first stop in this tour of the most badass weapons of the Marvel Norse mythology is the Blood Axe, signature weapon of Scourge the Executioner. Scourge and the Blood Axe have been together for centuries, unlike Mjolnir which has passed from person to person, imbuing them with the powers of Thor. And you can't just be bound at the hip to a weapon like that without your personality bleeding over just a little bit. As such, the Blood Axe carries with it the evil nature of the Executioner, imbuing in whoever wields it an uncontrollable bloodlust and rage. Such was the fate of one Jackie Lucas who got a hold of the Blood Axe and used it to become the vigilante known as Blood Axe, because I suppose all creativity sort of flies out the window when your weapon has a more badass name than anything your puny mortal brain could ever come up with. But of course, the Blood Axe only has one true love, and that is Scourge, so it was only a matter of time before the pair reunited and did some smooching. Number 9. Storm Even by Marvel superhero standards, Storm is basically a god and as such can act as the ultimate safety net in pretty much every story she's featured in. This led to a storyline during Chris Claremont's original run on X-Men where Storm lost her powers at the hands of Henry Gyrich, who was wielding a special weapon created by Forge, initially intended for use on Rogue. But it wasn't long until Storm regained her powers. During the famous Asgardian Wars crossover, Loki offered her a weapon of Asgard known as Stormcaster that gave her all of her powers back with a nifty Warhammer to boot. However, this was Loki, so of course there was a catch. Upon wielding the hammer, Storm was turned against her own teammates. In order to be freed, she had to destroy the hammer and then deny the return of her powers through a deal with Loki. She would eventually get her powers back, obviously, but for a brief moment, Storm and Thor were basically one and the same. Number 8. The Apocalypse Twins while these two make the definition of mortal for this list somewhat fuzzy, they aren't gods despite their heritage, so in my eyes, they sort of count. The Apocalypse Twins are two protégés of Kang the Conqueror and, at one point, the two wielders of Thor's original weapon, the Great Axe Jarnbjorn. Now, don't let the fact that Thor swapped it out for Mjolnir the first chance he got fool you. Jarnbjorn can mess you up something fierce if you aren't careful, and it looks really cool. All of this was of course proven by the Apocalypse Twins when they used it to bring down a freaking Celestial, which, if you didn't know already, are really big. But of course, it was only a matter of time before Thor, or just before he got his hands on the original axe again, so when the Apocalypse Twins were defeated, Thor regained Yarnbjorn. Number 7. The Worthy It's easy to lose track of certain things in Marvel, especially these days, seeing as how their status quo changes and reverts nearly every single goddamn year. As such, it isn't hard to forget that, not too long ago, a lot of heroes and villains suddenly came into possession of some serious Asgardian weaponry. So many, in fact, that they have to make due with just the one entry between them. The Fear Itself event series introduced Odin's evil brother, Kull the Serpent, who returned to claim the throne of Asgard. To do this, he sent out seven hammers made of the same material as Mjolnir, Uru. These hammers found their seven chosen, a collection of heroes and villains from Midgard whose personalities and histories bonded to the hammers. These seven worthy, as Kull called them, were Sin, Juggernaut, the Hulk, Atuma, Titania, the Absorbing Man, the Grey Gargoyle, and the ever-loving Blue-Eyed Thing. But of course, once the event was done, the Worthy were freed of the influence of the Seven Hammers, and with Kull's defeat, they were scattered across the universe to ensure that they could never, ever be used again. Number 6. The Mighty 
So, here's a question for you. What do you do when an ancient Asgardian god breaks out of his prison to wreak havoc on all of creation in a bid for the throne of Asgard? The answer's simple. You throw a capitalist with way too much time and money on his hands and his superpowered friends at him until he goes away. What's that? The god kicked their asses? Well, damn okay, let him use the tool shed and have him try again. Upon realizing that Cole the Serpent is on something of a different level from what they're used to dealing with, Tony convinced is Odin to let him use the forges of Asgard to create weapons and armor for him, Spider-Man, She-Hulk, Iron Fist, Hawkeye, Wolverine, Doctor Strange, Ms. Marvel, and Black Widow. These weapons managed to give the heroes the edge needed to free their friends held under the thrall of Kull, and ultimately defeat the Mad God once and for all. Number 5. Bullseye if there is one character in the Marvel Universe you don't want getting his hands on a weapon that belongs in Asgard, it's Bullseye. You see, Bullseye's whole thing is that he can instantly make anything lethal just by holding it, so imagine the damage he could do with, say, the Valkyrie Blade Dragon Fang, which by itself already boosts the offensive capabilities of whoever wields it. Actually, you don't have to imagine it because Bullseye showcases how dangerous such a weapon is in his hands when he viciously murders Heimdall right in front of Jane Foster during the character's first stint as Valkyrie following the events of War of the Realms. Of course, this is not an advantage that lasts long for Bullseye, seeing as how Heimdall is rather beloved by the other Asgardians, so killing him is guaranteed to make them rather upset. This means he doesn't get to keep his prize for that long before Jane gets it back, courtesy of a little help from her faithful Yorkshire steed, Mr. Horse, who definitely, definitely deserves his own spin-off or something. Make it happen, Marvel, please. Number 4. Eric Masterson in the 1980s, when Thor needed a replacement, they handed the mantle to a scary alien dude who was actually a huge goofy sweetheart. In the 1990s, they handed it off to a beefy blonde guy with a leather jacket, because the 90s. That's all you really need to know, the 90s. Yeah, it's the Poochie of Thor characters, everyone. A character so nothing, Marvel made it so that when the guy died, he refused a place in the afterlife, meaning he'd never show up ever again. Fortunately, yes, Eric Masterson didn't wield the hammer for long before Thor eventually returned. When he did, to their credit, they gave Eric his own comic with his own weapon, an Asgardian mace named Thunderstrike. So we're officially three for three on magical lightning-based weapons here. Eric would go on to have his own book for a while before it met the fate of all of Marvel's 90s era misadventures, and was swiftly cancelled when the appeal of quote-unquote badass Thor peeled away, and everyone realised that it kind of sucked, and that the original Thor was already badass, so making a more badass version of the badass character just kind of seemed a bit edgy. Number 3. Beta Ray Bill Taking a break for a hot minute from talking about Mjolnir, we have its distant cousin, the Hammer Stormbreaker. Yes, it's a hammer hammer, not an axe hammer, despite what the MCU may say. While the MCU Stormbreaker is a mix between Mjolnir and Yarnbjorn, Stormbreaker may have an alien design, but still shares the same general designs as the original Mjolnir. So, who mainly wields this weapon in the comics? An alien creature named Beta Ray Bill. When he first showed up, Thor thought he was an enemy due to his less than approachable appearance and demeanor. But after a brief scuffle, old Billy proves his trustworthiness by lifting Mjolnir, which is pretty cool. Utterly convinced, as you would be if some giant golden dog humanoid lifted your precious hammer, Thor helps him get his own weapon called Stormbreaker with some basic powers, and Beta Ray Bill has since become one of Thor's most reliable allies. He even took over the Thor book when Thor was indisposed for a while, so good is as a character. Bill hasn't actually lost Stormbreaker since first getting it, instead being bound at the hip to the hammer and roaming the cosmos as a renowned hero, even joining the Guardians of the Galaxy for a brief while. Number 2. Daredevil if you know anything about Asgard, then you know that it isn't the easiest place to get to. Asgardians rely on the god Heimdall to get them to and from their home via the magical Bifrost. I mean, they sort of used to until he then died. Ugh. But how does Heimdall summon the Bifrost, I hear you non-Thor fans ask? It's Norse mythology. How do you think he does it? He uses a giant-ass sword named Hofund, one of the mightiest blades in the Marvel Universe. And at one point, the sword was wielded by Daredevil, who turned from the Man Without Fear to become the literal God Without Fear. And yes, it is the coolest thing ever, thank you for asking. 
During the War of the Realms storyline, Heimdall lost the use of his eyes, and needing someone to command the Bifrost in his stead, he gave it to Daredevil. In true Daredevil fashion, he doesn't have it for five minutes before he has to fight a whole bunch of villains with it. He's at least nice enough to guide Heimdall back home after repairing the Bifrost for him, at which point Hofen then moves on to Sif, who is now the current commander of the bridge. And number one, Jane Foster. Jason Aaron's run on Thor is absolutely amazing, and by far one of the biggest highlights during it was when Jane Foster replaced the Odinson as the new God of Thunder. Foster, once little more than the love interest of Thor's alter ego Donald Blake, was reimagined into a cancer patient given the powers of Thor, deciding to use what time she had left to do as much good as she possibly could. But of course, such a relaunch only lasts so long in comics, especially when your character is dealing with a potentially terminal illness. Jane's journey didn't end when she hung up the mantle of Thor, however, as writers Jason Aaron and Al Ewing decided to give her the mantle of Valkyrie straight after, with the previous Valkyrie, Brunhilde, falling at the hands of Malekith in War of the Realms. But what weapon does Jane now use now that she no longer has access to Mjolnir? Simple, she has one of the coolest weapons in all of Marvel. Undriarn, the all weapon, a gauntlet that can turn into whatever weapon or tool that Jane needs for the situation she's in, and it's actually coming from the War Thor's hammer, which originated in the Ultimate Universe. And those were 10 mortals who wielded Asgard's weapons. Know of any other non gods who have wielded godlike weaponry? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more, and check back to wildculture.com forward slash comics for more content like this in the written word. I've been Ewan, and until next time, bye!